Okay, here we are again. I guess this is the third video. What we're trying to do is figure out how we can find uh, all the length of all three sides and, all, and the size of all three angles in a triangle um, if we know the coordinates of the three vertices. And in principle, you know, those three points uniquely determine a triangle, so we should be able to do that. We know those three vertices, we know everything there is to know about the triangle. So let, uh, let me talk about this a little bit and how I approach doing this. Okay, first question is that uh, we know, or first topic, we know that the sum of the three angles in a triangle must be 180 degrees. And we cannot have two angles add up uh, to more than 180 degrees because that gives us a third angle which doesn't make any sense. Um, an angle greater than ni uh, 90 degrees, angle greater is called an obtuse angle. So if we have one angle is 90, we cannot have another angle greater than 90. In fact, we cannot have two obtuse angles in any triangle. So if I have an angle and I know that A is greater than 90 degrees, then I know that both B and C must be less than 90 degrees, okay? And uh, so that's something to keep in mind. You can keep in mind the fact that the sum of the three angles is 180 degrees. And uh, now we uh, have computed the sides of our three angles, A, B, and C. Here are the sides. Since uh, now, B is the largest side, so B should be greater than A. So this isn't right here. B should be greater than A. B is greater than A, which is greater than C. Okay. So angle B must be greater than A, must be greater than C. Angle, um, and uh, these are the lengths of the three sides, and we also have the, the lengths of the three sides squared. We have a squared is 116, b squared is 137, and c squared is 65. So what we want to do there is we want to use these two formulas. This is called the law of sines, this one right here. This one right here is called the law of cosines. So law of sines, law of cosines. Now, I'm going to use those to help me do these computations. And I'm going to start with the shortest angle. The shortest angle here being uh, C. Oh, why did I do that? I didn't want to do that. Let me go back here. There. The shortest angle, the smallest angle should be C. I know the side is little c, opposite that. So this right here gives me the cosine of c. So I'm going to use that expression. c squared plus a squared plus c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine uh, c. So what are a squared? c squared, then, I use that. Law of cosines. And I have c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of angle c. Now with that I have that um, c squared is 65. So 65 is equal to 116 plus 137 minus 2ab and a is 10.77 and B is 11.7. So 2 times 10.77 times 11.7 times cosine of C. Cosine of angle C. Okay, so in order to do that now, I just want to solve this equation for cosine of C. So let me, because cosine of C all by itself on one side, so I have 65 minus 116 minus 137, and, it, and that should equal then negative of this. So 
that means I divide by 2 times 10.77 times 11.7, and I put a negative sign here, and that should equal cosine C. Just like that. Okay, so now I want to do this calculation here on my uh, RPN calculator. So let me pull that up. My calculator right there is there. Okay. Let me pull this thing up. There we go. So I want to do um, 65. Enter. 116. Subtract. 137. Subtract. So that's minus 188. 65. Minus this minus this is negative 188. Then I have the negative sign out front here. So I can write this then as 188 using the negative sign up here to cancel this negative sign down here, right? These two negative signs cancel. Then I divide that by 2. 2 divide 10.10. 0.77 divide and 11.7 divide. Okay, so that then gives me um, 74.59. So divide down here, right? Right in here, I have this minus that divided by 74.59. And the, these minus signs cancel. That shouldn't have been negative there at all. Oh, I did that wrong, sorry. Let me just pull that out. This whole thing should be 74. Point five nine. 74.598, which I'll just write as 74.6. So I always double check my calculations, even when I use a calculator. So let me just double check this again. I want to do 65, enter, 116, subtract, 137, subtract. And I want to divide by 2. 2 divide, 10.77 divide, 11.7 divide, and I get, uh, now, I get 74.59 again. It's at 10 to the minus 1. Okay, so it's 0 0.74. Right. So I look at this, and this is... Uh, not 74, but uh, this is right in here. You see 10 to the minus 1. Somehow I was reading that wrong before. 10 to the minus 1. So this gives me 0.746. So if I just wrote that first answer down, it would have been wrong. Okay, kind of thing that kills you on a standardized test. So this is equal to cosine C. Now on the calculator, I want to find the angle that uh, has that cosine. And to, to do that, I use the, uh, the inverse cosine. So I want to do inverse cosine here. And uh, I'm set to degrees. Um, so I'm not sure I've not used this calculator here. Let me back up again. I'm doing a point seven four six. Okay, and then I want to do, I don't know if this is the way to do it. Let me try inverse cosine. Okay, inverse cosine of point seven four six is forty one point seven five and it's set at degrees. 
So this should be 41.75 degrees. Now let's check it. Let's just try the cosine of that. Cosine is 0.746. So that's good. So we have the first angle as 41.75 degrees. Okay, now, and that makes sense. It's, a, a, it's an acute angle. It's less than 90 degrees. So we have this angle right in here. I, let me write it in. Uh, let me write it in. 41.75. So this is 41.75 degrees. That's in degrees. Because I have my calculator set for degrees. So here's what I have. 41.75 degrees is angle C. Now, let me go here and look. Now, how can I compute angle A? Now, angle A is also an acute angle. Now, I could use this very same formula because I know A squared, B squared, C squared, and AB find cosine of angle A. Um, and uh, but we have two ways of doing it now. We know that we know sine, and we know what angle C is. So we can do sine C over C equal to sine A over A, and do that. So let's do that. We have then using this and this. We have sine of A. This is law of sines. We have sine of A is equal to sine of c divided by little c uh, times little a, like that. So that's solving the law of sines for sine of a. So now I have my angle c is 41.75 degrees. So I can find the sine of that angle. Here it is right here. And let me do the sine of that angle. Sine of that angle is... Um, 0.01302. Let me divide by C. So I want to input C. C is 8.06. 8.06 divide. So I divide by C and then multiply by A. And A is, C is 8.06, A is 10.77. So multiply by A. 10.77 multiply. Now, that should be equal to the sine of A. Now that's equal to the sine of A. Let me write this down. This is equal to, this seems too small to me. Um, so let me let me just do that calculation again, just to double check. Okay, what I have here is that sine of C multiplied by A divided by C. And I have calculated that the angle C is 41.75 degrees. So let me put that. Angle C is 41.75. So I have... 41.75 enter and I want to do the sine of that sine now that seems better I don't I don't think I got that answer before sine is 0.6658 multiply by a a is 10.77 so 10 Point seven seven multiply and uh, divide by C. So C is eight point oh six. So divide by eight point oh six. Eight point oh six divide. Okay, that gives me 0.88977, so that should be sine A, 0 
So to find A, I do the arc sine of that. So let's see what that comes out to be. Uh, inverse sine gives me 62 degrees, 62.8 degrees, 62.8 degrees. Okay, now uh, if I know the angle for A and I know the angle for B, I should be able to find the angle per, for C using the fact that the sum of the three angles has to be 180 degrees. So C is equal to 180, 180 minus 41.75 minus 62.8. So we can do that. So I get 180, 180, enter. 41.75, subtract, 62.8, subtract, and I get 75.45 degrees. So that should be angle C. Now, um, we can use some of our other equations to check this answer, right? Uh, we can use the, um, you know, the other, we can use this, for example. Oh, let me point that out. We can try sine of B over side B and see if that equals sine of A over side A. We can also use these equations to double check that answer. So let me end this right here.